All right, Shalom. Giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the rule in Tishwell. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. Brother Kasha Kuala coming back at you with another lesson. All right, this lesson is going to be on discipline. Discipline will keep you safe, healthy, and alive. All right. So again, discipline will keep you safe, healthy, and alive. Okay, this is uh, Job chapter 36 and 10. He openeth also the ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Okay, <clears throat> I think that Hebrew word for discipline is masawar. Let me see. Uh, no, it's not Masawar. It's a uh, Mawasar Salakia. I butchered that. It says chastening, correction, discipline. It says properly. Um, let's see. It says warning or instruction. It says reproof, which is correction. It says rebuke, doctrine, and uh, check. Right. All right. <clears throat> so discipline, like I said, will keep you alive, healthy and safe. OK, here's the word discipline in the etymology online. And we're going to kind of go through those three scenarios that I just mentioned. It says um, penitential chast chastisement. And sometimes, you know, these definitions kind of in a sense, if you take it like that. And which most of the world is already negative. Um, it will look like as a negative connotation. People think penitential or penitentiary or, you know, the uh, jail. All right. Penitentiary. That's what I meant to say. All right. Whenever they see a word like this. OK, but when you go into like. Penitentiary means like penitence, which goes to the word repent. Well, really, <clears throat> the word repent goes back to penitence, but it's to pretty much self reflect and correct yourself. That's why they call it the penitentiary. Uh, penitentiary. All right, and it says a uh, penitential chastisement. Chastisement is a a form of you getting corrected and you could read about that in the book of Hebrews when I say like the 12th chapter matter of fact let's just get it real quick Hebrews like 12 and 7 I want to say alright yeah start up 12 and 6 for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every <clears throat> son who whom he receiveth. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? As you see in the in the Hebrew word discipline, the word chastening is in there. So what what son are you to a father if he's not disciplining you? The Lord disciplines us. Constantly day in and day out And you practice discipline Will keep you out of a, a lot of predicaments And a lot of situations You see It says uh, punishment for the sake of correction When you think you're getting judged It's a form of chastening And discipline from the Lord He's telling you to get right And do certain things correctly So you can avoid certain situations Simple and plain as that. He, let's talk about the health aspect of it. Because that's a big thing going around right now. Especially with this damn COVID-19 going around. You can hear it in my voice. I got the sniffles. It happens you get sick. But sometimes you don't fully look after yourself. Which in turn, this is what you get. Or some type of form of sickness or, you know, headache, whatever. You didn't drink enough water during that day. 
now you have developed a mig a migraine or a headache. You're you're dehydrated. You drank too much water. Now you you washed out all your electrolytes and now you feel super weak. There's a form of discipline when you stick when when it comes to health. How many times a week do you work out? Do you have a schedule of when you go to sleep and when you wake up? What do you consume? What do you input in your body? Do you take herbs? Do you drink teas? And you have to be disciplined to do these things. Prime example. And I'm just going to, matter of fact, I'm just going to give you a testimony of my own, you know, um, personal life real quick. For me, let's start at night, uh, at evening. I try to go get in the bed around 8.39 and close eyes. 8 o'clock, eight, an hour before that, 8 p.m., I am off my phone. Phone is on the charger, on the counter. Uh, I mean, on the charger on my nightstand with the alarm set for the next morning. 8 p.m., I'm incognito. You see? Go to sleep. So if I'm going to sleep around 9, I try to wake up at 5 a.m. every single day. I'm getting about 7 to 8 hours of sleep, which your body needs to recuperate. A lot of individuals like to be what they call "quote unquote" night owls. Sometime the only time you should be a be uh, should be a night owl is if you're working an overnight job. Other than that, take your corny ass to sleep. There's nothing to be up for. And that's something that I used to do. And then I had to fix that when age starts creeping in. Your health starts to you know diminishing really. Unless you keep up with yourself and you stay disciplined. You see? I wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym. Of course, not on Sabbath days, but go to the gym at least for 30 minutes to an hour. You keep your body active. Go home, make some breakfast, then go to work. And then when I come home from work, I don't have to go work out or anything. So that gives me time to read, study. Or do lessons Or watch other brothers lessons Or after I'm done with doing that I have free time to do what I want to do Maybe read a different book Watch TV Or Netflix or something Or play a video game if I want to Or just go to sleep And it's the same routine But you have to keep discipline. Now, when it comes to your nutrition, uh, your nutrition that you intake, that's discipline because a lot of individuals like to eat what they what tastes good. OK. There's a lot of herbs in the scripts. If you take them right now, they're bitter. They don't they're not sweet tasting, but it's, it, it works numbers when it comes to health benefits, uh, health, health benefits to your body. But you have to be disciplined enough to take it. You gotta stop being that little kid at the table. Mom, I want some juice. Not if you don't eat your green beans. You gotta grow the fuck up. And that's why he says, uh, Job 36 and 10 again, he openeth also their ear to discipline. Who listens? A grown ass man will listen. Little kids don't listen. You gotta tell, there's a saying if I told you once, um, if you heard me once, I probably told you twice. Grown men listen. Because they have a level of discipline with inside of them. So that's just some examples of the health side. Which tags along into the next one. Safety. Being disciplined in your health keeps you safe. Because now you're avoiding certain complications in the in the body that you may uh, run across having some technical difficulties because you're not taking certain herbs because you're eating fried foods every day. Because you're being a couch potato. You see? Discipline will get you out of that <clears throat> slouchy ass mind, mind frame and mentality and way of life. 
It will make you do stuff and grow the fuck up, for lack of better words. It's chastening. Chastening is uncomfortable. Being disciplined can be uncomfortable, but it will help you in the long run. It will keep you healthy and safe. Being disciplined is not will refrain you from going out every single weekend to a strip club or to any type of club or constantly being out there in the world. People die out there. Being disciplined will keep you in the spirit. That's what keeps you safe. Which tags on to the next one. Which will keep you alive. Staying disciplined and being in order and doing what the Lord asked you to do. Which two things. Which we're just going to go ahead and get real quick. Which script. This is a, a common classic script. But hits home every time. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of men. Of man. All right. Fearing the Lord and keeping the commandments. And you stay disciplined in that order. Will keep your ass alive. And possibly get you on a chariot. Discipline will possibly. It will get you on a chariot. But you have to discipline takes consistency and it takes some type of work, work ethic with inside of you. If you're not disciplined in your in your own life. Things will not go right. If you expect to sit on the couch and eat uh, potato chips and fucking hot Cheetos all day. What makes you think you're going to increase in knowledge? What makes you think what makes you think? Let's see it. What makes you think Isaiah 33 and 6 would work in your favor? And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. How can you get wisdom if you're not experiencing? Experiencing takes you getting up off your ass and actually doing something. Like it tells you in, in the book of James, work, uh, faith without works is dead. Because you are slouch and you're not disciplined enough to seek after the Lord's wisdom. It says in knowledge. What makes you think you'll ha again be a part of Isaiah 33 and 6. If you're not disciplined enough to be around men who are disciplined enough to read. Therefore you could go and pick their brains and gain some knowledge. What makes you think you will gain knowledge if you're not disciplined enough to find the time to actually read something? You see? It says, shall be the stability of thy times, the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. What makes you think you will be a part of Isaiah 33 and 6 if you're not disciplined to keep yourself rooted in a in a in a correct doctrine? You see, discipline will kill, keep you healthy, safe and alive. Those three things will keep you healthy, safe and alive. Healthy, you'll know what to intake, work out. Set a set schedule for you. Go to sleep early. Wake up at a decent time. Get your day started. Safe. <clears throat> Not having to uh, go out to here and there. Being a busybody. Being around niggas. Blah, 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 blah. And alive. Fearing the Lord. Keeping his commandments. And getting on a chariot. And being protected in the day of trouble. That's what discipline will do for you. That's why we go through the disciplinary actions that the Lord gives to us. It's to keep us healthy, safe, and alive. The Lord does keeps us disciplined because he what gives a crap about us? <laughs> and you through your discipline show that you care that the Lord is doing this. And that you love and fear the Lord. Through your discipline. Through your action. 
I'm going to read Job 36 and 10 one more time and close it out. It says, Job 36 and 10, He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Right. And returning from iniquity means not doing the same petty bull crap that you used to be doing. Instead, disciplining yourself to understand that the things in the way you used to live before was not right. And it was very undisciplined. That's why you were the way you were. If you haven't sat and had a real in-depth look on yourself and see how much you have changed. Or if you don't see any change, you haven't been disciplined enough. Think about yourself from January 1st, 2020 to what's today? The 21st, uh, December 21st, 2020. And have you changed within that time frame? Have you been disciplined? Have you been practicing striving for the mastery of being a re real disciplined individual? The word discipline, I can't believe I didn't mention it, goes back to disciple, which means to, to, to follow. Have you been following the lead of the apostles and elders in your perspective heads at camps and your, uh, yeah, your heads at camps and following their lead to see how I need to be and discipline yourself to, to do that. You see? Those men who are walking discipline are showing you the way to light. The way to stay healthy, safe, and alive. So Lord willing, that was edifying. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone to rule and teach well. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. Brother Kachikwala, until the next time, Shalom.